David Politis in his book, Missing 411, talks about how people simply vanish in state parks. Yeah. They're just gone. And it could be very well the same possibility that they're stumbling into some other portal or dimension that you can't see and they never can, can come back. That's a great point. I, I don't think we fully understand, even though we think we're so advanced in our modern <clears throat> society today, I think there's a lot of the nature of reality and understanding these types of ancient mysteries that we just don't understand today. Do you think a catastrophe occurred primarily? Or yeah, do you think or a series of catastrophes, actually, George. Okay. Seems like maybe there would have been several in, in a row because when I study these tablets and, and how they state that these different epics occurred with these kingships in these different cities, I've actually separated into three different time periods, meaning that there were likely two, potentially three of these events. Could they happen again, catastrophes? Well, that's the, that's the, the big question, right? When you, if you look at this and you, you look at ice core samples from Greenland, they try to get a snapshot for when these types of events occur. It seems like they follow around a 12 to 13,000 year cycle, which if you were to look at when that last occurred, based on what we, we mentioned during the Younger Dryas, we're right in that, that time period right now. There are many symbols all around this planet of the ancient worlds. Tell me about that. Symbols hold, in my opinion, the greatest secrets of all. And it's, it's one of the most difficult things though, because you have a linear way to look at it and then you have a symbolic way to look at right. it. And so the challenge is to try to blend those to, to find the truth, because I do think that you, you have to take both sides of that to understand it. But the, the ancient cultures were absolutely brilliant. They were able to create a symbol that represented an entire representation of what they were trying to say in one single depiction. And once you understand what those depictions are, you can get a, a glimpse into what really happened back in the, long ago. Give us some examples, Matt, of some of these symbols. What could yeah, they sure. be? Yeah, um, sure. So if someone was to go to the hospital and, or they see an ambulance go by, you see that's the rod of Asclepius, the, the rod with the serpents wound around right. it. Right. Right? And then you see the, the wings of Hermes on the, the Caduceus symbol. These are ancient symbols, but yet today the serpent is considered demonized by a lot of religious groups and, and, sure. and modern academia. It doesn't make any sense if it's this, it's this symbol that represents health and higher consciousness and ascension. It's a medical symbol. That's what I think. That's right. Whereas on the other side, you see symbols like the eagle as well, which have, I, I believe, have been completely inverted to their opposite representations. The serpent always represented knowledge in reaching higher states of energy and consciousness. What about the symbols of like the pine cone? What does that mean? Yeah, so the pine cone is another one of these extremely important symbols. Once you start looking at things like the eagle and the serpent, and then you get into things like the pine cone. And what we find, George, is that the pine cone has been shown in, a, in these, like, these lost civilization locations around the world. We find giant murals with these pine cones being depicted in every one of these Strange. locations nearly around the world, and they're always shown the same way. They hold, they hold the pine cone in their hand and they point it towards someone. Like it's some object of some kind. And what, I've, what I th believe based on what I've studied on what that pine cone means is the pine cone represents the passing of knowledge. And so- Interesting. So if you were pointing a pine cone at someone, it would be you providing knowledge, and I mean knowledge of everything. It's not just knowledge of one area, it is the totality of all knowledge. What about a handbag? So the handbag is another one of these mysterious symbols that is always present or almost always present with the pine cone. So the way I try to figure things out is once you know what one symbol is, it'll often have connections to the other. So in this case, the pine cone was a passing of knowledge and the handbag was being held to their side. That was what, what, that was what this sacred pine cone was supposed to be inside. They're, they're both symbolic. So it would be where you would carry the knowledge where all, the totality of all knowledge would be the handbag, and then the pine cone would be the passing of knowledge to those civilizations. Where do you find all these symbols? You find them all over the world, actually, and if you were to sit down and really study them, and just do like a little search for pine cone and handbag, you'll see that they're depicted in nearly every one of these regions around the world where we find this mysterious evidence of these more advanced buildings and more advanced building practices and, and more of the, the types of writings that tend to to be much more ancient and go back to the times when 
we we have this information that tells us about those mysteries. Are these symbols etched on blocks of stone or anything like that? They're they're beautifully drawn. Actually, the the art in some of these murals and stellas is is truly incredible. And one of the things that I find so fascinating about them, George, is you can you can stare at them for hours because every single little thing that was drawn has some kind of a meaning to it, some kind of a symbolic meaning. Um, and so we, by understanding what those murals and stellas say, say, what they're trying to depict, you can, even though you don't have potentially words to go with it, you can understand a story based on just what the depiction is trying to represent. What would you say, Matthew, in your career is the most bizarre symbol you've come across so far? The most bizarre symbol, that's a good one. Um, well, I, I, I guess early on, the swastika symbol was always um, a very strange symbol because I grew up thinking, oh, this is a, an evil Nazi symbol, you know, all my life, right. re realizing that the swastika was just an ancient symbol you that know, cultures had all the Nazis made world. it evil. Exactly. It wasn't evil until they, then. They, they took it and they turned it into a symbol to use for a very bad reason. Whereas those symbols were just all taken from much more ancient cultures. Interesting. Interesting. Who were the symbol makers? Well, it's, it seems like all roads lead back to the Anunnaki. Every time I, I do this research, and I feel like every time I, I want to look for influences of other connections somewhere, it just seems to always lead back to this group of the Anunnaki, which I do believe may be a group of potentially beings from, from, other, from many different places, not just Absolutely. one. Absolutely. It's just a, it's a term used for, to blanket their, their, the entire group of sort of, you know, think about beings that are not from here, that are ascended beings that are not from here. Well, I think Sitchin was on to something with his theories, don't you? Absolutely. He, as I said, Sitchin paved the, the, the way for all of this to understand what kind of influences they had here and how they influenced our story. And I think that our story goes hand in hand with the Anunnaki. In fact, I think we are in many ways them, but a version that's much different than it used to be.